YouTube, my name is Trey. Welcome to What Can I Change? Today we're going to be talking about Leah Thomas getting more exposed by the women who say that they were forced to re-educate themselves and change their locker room with him. Let's get into it. I'm Paula Scanlon, a spokeswoman and advisor for the Independent Women's Forum and a former NCAA athlete. I am here today to share my personal story. I started swimming at a very young age, and by age eight, I was swimming competitively. And by late middle school, I was devoting at least 20 hours per week to swimming. I gave up countless Christmas holidays, weekends, and social events to work towards my goal of swimming Division I. A dream that came true when I began swimming for the University of Pennsylvania. While I am not an NCAA champion, I hold the New England Independent School League record in the 400-yard freestyle relay, a record that has stood since March of 2017. In September of 2021, Leah Thomas began participating as a member of the Penn women's team. Just want to say what I'm doing. I'm writing down notes that I want to talk about, but I want you guys to watch this in its entirety. Leah, formerly Will, had personal best times in every freestyle event that were faster than the women's world records. Once the season began, Thomas was leading the country in multiple events while only placing in the top 500 in those events on the men's team. Thomas later became an NCAA champion in the 500 yard freestyle, the first NCAA champion in our women's team history program. While many of you already know this, what you do not know is the experiences of the women on the University of Pennsylvania swim team. My teammates and I were forced to undress in the presence of Leah, a six foot four tall biological male, fully intact with male genitalia, 18 times per week. Some girls opted to change in bathroom stalls and others used the family bathroom to avoid this. When we tried to voice our concerns to the athletic department, we were told that Leah's swimming and being in our locker room was a non-negotiable, and we were offered psychological services to attempt to re-educate us to become comfortable with the idea of undressing in front of a male. To sum up the university's response, we, the women, were the problem, not the victims. We were expected to conform, to move over, and shut up. Our feelings didn't matter. The university was gaslighting and fear-mongering women to validate the feelings and identity of a male. As an attempt to voice my concern about the situation we were forced into, revealing the unjust and unfair treatment, I wrote an op-ed for the Daily Pennsylvanian, the student-run newspaper. I approached this from a scientific, scientific statistical perspective where I used my engineering background to discuss how Y chromosomes cannot be changed by any surgical procedure or systemic therapy. This biological fact lends itself to athletic advantages that cannot be mitigated by lowering testosterone levels, which are readily apparent in sports competitions and locker rooms. The Daily Pennsylvanian published my article on the evening of February 10th, 2022. Only a few hours later, my piece was retracted. I was given no notice nor reasoning. Again, I was silenced from my dissenting viewpoint and felt my First Amendment rights were denied by my university. This is representative of a greater issue, the destruction of free speech. Today, any discussion maintaining the sanctity of women's faces is labeled transphobic, bigoted, and hateful. What's bigoted and hateful is the discrimination against women and the efforts to erase women and our equal opportunities, dignity, and safe spaces. One might ask, why do I speak so passionately about issues that seem hypothetical? or some may perceive as only impacting a small number of women. This is not hypothetical. This is real. I know women who have lost roster spots and spots on the podium. I know of women with sexual trauma who are adversely impacted by having biological males in their locker room without their consent. I know this because I am one of these women. I was sexually assaulted on June 3rd of 2016. I was only 16 years old. I was able to forgive my attacker, but violence against women still exists. Let us not forget the viral Me Too movement that empowered female victims to speak up. It cast a spotlight on the widespread prevalence of sexual assault and abuse, including in scholarly and educational institutions. Individuals on this committee have previously stated violence against women is all too common. 
I am grateful for those members who have brought awareness to the violence against women in the past, but unfortunately, there's still much to be done. As a sexual assault survivor, many policies pushed today completely ignore my experiences and many women like me. I ask the members of this committee, please consider this issue outside the lens of political affiliations and understand the true impact of ignoring the realities of womanhood. Future generations depend on us. Thank you for the opportunity to speak here today. Okay, a few things I want to talk about. Women speaking up does truly make a difference. And that's one thing that I have really commend these people on. Okay, these are young women doing this stuff. And they're young, lower 20s, especially Riley Gaines. They were able to get out here and start making these things because at one point it felt like only the men were fighting for it because we thought it, the men were fighting more because we were like, man, it's crazy that you let a man be in a woman's sports. And we were talking more from there. There's, there's no way that women can be on our level when it comes to athletics and certain sports. But the one thing that the women could talk about that we didn't get to experience as men, because, you know, this is not something that we normally go through is having the opposite gender change in a bathroom. It's so because a, a woman changing in a man's bathroom is just something that just simply wouldn't happen. Right. But a man changing in a woman's bathroom is something that was happening. And I want to keep this in mind. We we talked about a story not too long ago. We talked about a story not too long ago where we were talking about the girl who got suspended from the YMCA. There was a guy in there changing clothes, men changing clothes with kids as young as five young girls as young as five and the ymca thought this was perfectly okay because they're so afraid they're so scared because the law says something right that's where we are today this is what we were trying to say when we were saying that men were going to compete in sports that it was going to erase women and another thing that we weren't talking about so much is that it was going to endanger women that it was going to make it more complicated for them to have any safe places to go they were being forced to change in there 18 times a week with a man. Some of them went into stalls and some of them went into the family restroom. But there's only so many places these women can go to change clothes. Remember, they're swimmers. They got to get out of these wet clothes. What if we could hop in their car completely soaked? It doesn't make any sense. And they have to go back to school. Then they have to go to practice school, practice. They got other stuff going on in life. It's just crazy that we have gotten to the point where we just really don't care about women at all. Right. The, the only ending to this, if we just I mean, let's just say in a perfect world that they would want this to have. And we just said, you know what? Forget it. Men can be women. What do you think happens? Women will slowly get erased. And I don't mean like slowly, like they'll fade away off, off the earth. I mean, being a woman and what it means to be a woman would slowly just fade away. Women would have nowhere to go. They'd have no spaces, no bathrooms, no sports, nothing. Because men would just take over. And then we end up right back with what people were always fighting about saying it's a man's world. At least here in America. Right? And that's where these people and that's where these people want us to go. And to be honest with you, it was women who were fighting for this in the beginning. It wasn't men fighting for us to be women. Men were not going out and saying, yes, we want to be women. What happened was is anytime a man decides to become a woman, Women would gather around them and say, yes, good job. Yes, you're brave. They got too many feelings going on. And then the logic started to leave the room. Another thing, no one wants to listen to women anymore. It's, it's, it's terrible, right? I think women obviously have beautiful voices and they should be listened to, especially when it comes to stuff like this. But what we want to do is start letting trans men, I mean, trans women take over and we just call it what it is. We want fake women who call themselves women and put women in their names. And that we want to call them and let them be the voices. We had the Dylans of the world. We just saw the Maybell stuff that we talked about not too long ago. We had trans men talking on uh, that makeup company. I can't think of the name of right now. We had them talking about on talking about women and what it's like to be a woman. We have people on TikTok talk about what it's like to be a woman, what it's like to go through womanhood. And they're the voice for us. We'll say this about Dylan one more time. Dylan got paid $26,000 to go speak on being a woman. 
he's now charging forty thousand dollars to go talk on what it is to be a woman. You're taking that money from some other woman who could really talk about being a woman for this person. This person spoke up for women at the White House. Guys, they want to destroy the family and they want to get they want to just put women right back down and get them. Don't you dare talk about it. One thing she also mentioned is that they're being reeducated. She asked not to dress with men in her bathroom and they said, no, you need psychological help. What? We have talking about this a lot of times. People who uh, struggle or people who want to be trans, some people who want to be the opposite gender, they're the one who have diagnostic mental illnesses. And you're going to say the one girl who doesn't want to change in a bathroom when a man has psychological issues? Do we just want to take out everything that has to do with mental illness and then start saying the people that are sane, start calling them crazy? Gaslighting at its finest. And one last thing, she said it impacted, it impacted the small part of women. It only impacts the small part of women. That's what the argument is, what she was saying. Here's another thing about that. We have changed the entire, America has been changing everything for a small section of the population. This small sector of 0.7%, at least that's gone up people who consider themselves trans. I know that goes up among the young people, but we're going to talk about the people who are actually adults. Because young kids, they're impressionable because of TikTok being so big. Let's talk about that. We're changing everything for people who are trans, who doesn't even make up even close to the majority of the population. So how can the argument be that, oh, this only impacts a couple women? No, that doesn't make any sense. Because stuff that impacts a very small part, part of the population, we're willing to give them pride parades and everything. Give them the world. Just give them, and they just give us their butts to kiss. We should be happy that they would even speak to us. It's made it to the point where people who are part of the trans, or LGB, or anything, they're dang near better than everybody on the planet, feels like. Obviously, people in different countries don't go with this, but I'm just saying. It's what it feels like when you're living in a country that just pretty much props them up on a table. Somebody comes out and says they're gay, they're like, yes, you're gay, congratulations. And people who say, you know, this is a discussion for another day, but I'm born this way. Okay, so why am I celebrating it then? If you were born this way, and it's not a choice, it's not an option, it's not something that you chose out of bravery, why do I need to celebrate that? And obviously, y'all know what I would go with the rest of that, that argument. But if you were just born that way, I'm not celebrating that. I'm sorry. <sighs> keep speaking up, women. We'll keep fighting with you the best we can. This is more y'all's fight than it is us, man, us men's fight. Because, like I said, women aren't coming into our bathroom and taking over our sports. Not going to happen. Y'all keep talking up. Keep listening. We'll keep trying to support you guys the best we can. But for any woman to be able to force to change clothes every day in front of a grown man is sick because it sets a terrible precedent. Because there'll be people who suck at sports. Let's be honest. There'll be men who suck at their own sport. But because of their shrink, let's say powerlifting, they're a terrible lifter compared to other men in competition. But they can, they'll be able to be top five in a women's category. Maybe top five. And so now they what do they do? They get the change in their bathroom now? There'll be women men who are terrible at their swimming in their own category. But go over to the women's side, you could be top five. Now I get the change in the bathroom. All I gotta say is I'm a woman. You know how many weirdos are gonna go into the bathroom and do that? We saw the guy who went to the sorority house had a complete erection staring at the girls in the sorority house. All because he said he was a woman. Didn't even try to attempt. And I don't even care if he attempted to look like a woman. Don't care. All he said was he was a woman. He went in there full on erection staring at these girls. That's all we're going to get, guys. If they want to do this stuff, they get their own individual bathrooms. We'll create a. I hate to say that we would create a transgender category because it makes no sense. Only people who would dominate a transgender category is the men. It'd be all trans women in there because the trans men are going to have no, probably no shot because they're going to be women going against men. You might, I mean, what? 
Anyway, guys, let me know what y'all think about what she had to say. Hope you have a great day. Goodbye.